Hello, welcome. As you can tell from the title of this packet, we're looking at combining transformations. And in part one, we're focusing on horizontal and vertical. And our idea is that these dilations are related to each other, and we can define them in terms of each other. So we start off in number one here with a familiar function, a cubic function. We're going to plug in these inputs. Then we're going to look at g of x, which doubles the outputs of f, h of x, which doubles um, the inputs before plugging them into f, and we're going to compare that um, these functions to each other, right? We're going to graph these out. So how do we do that? Well, I think the first thing we should do is graph f. So let's graph f. f is this cubing all of the inputs, and then we're plugging in 0. 0 cubed is 0. 1 cubed is 1, and 2 cubed is 8. And then the other side, we have negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. And we have this rough sketch of our function, something like this. And this is the function f. Now what g does, you can see here from notation, takes f of x and doubles it. That means it doubles all the outputs. So 8 is doubled to 16, 1 is doubled to 2, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 8, negative 16. 0 remains on itself. We have this function here, it's a steeper function. This is the function g. And you can see it's stretched by a factor of 2. In other words, whatever the height was before, it's now twice as tall or twice as far from the x-axis. Now, h of x is equal to f of 2x. And we want to look at h of x at the same outputs for f of 0, so at 0, f of plus or minus 1, and f of plus or minus 2. So let's start here at plus or minus 2. So we're looking uh, at this height, this output here, 8, and then negative 8. That's what we're looking at here. And this function, what is it doing? Well, it takes the input and doubles it before it plugs it into f. So before you cube it, you double it. So that means we can actually plug in half the values and still get the same result. So before we had to plug in a 2 here, a 2, cube that and get an 8. But now we take our inputs, double it, then cube it. So we could plug in a 1 to h. If you plug a 1 into h, I'll just show you that part, h of um, let's, I'll write this way, plus or minus 1, this is not conventional notation, equals f of 2 times plus or minus 1, which equals f of plus or minus 2, that gives you plus or minus 8. So on the plus side, when you plug in 1, you double it, you get 2, 2 cubed is 8, you plug in negative 1, negative, you get negative 1 times 2, or negative 2, and negative cubed is negative 8. In both cases, you can reach the same heights by plugging in half of the x value. And that's true for all of them. You can reach a height of 1 and negative 1. Instead of plugging in 1 and negative 1 to get a height of 1, you can plug in 1 half and negative 1 half. It gives you these heights here at 1 and negative 1. And 0, you just plug in 0. The interesting thing is that you can see that even though this is being classified as a horizontal dilation, Clearly, h is the steepest, so you start to wonder, how can I represent h as a vertical dilation? And that's the kind of natural, one of the natural ways to question what you're looking at. But let's keep going and see how far we can get. And we do number one, now we're number two. What is the output? What are the outputs of the function at g equals x equals one? At, of function g at x equals one. All right, so we're just evaluating g at one. So g of one is twice of f of 1, which is twice of 1 cubed, which is 2 times 1, or 2. So the point 1 g of 1 equals 1, 2. How many times larger is this output than the function f at x equals 1? Well, f of 1 is just 1 cubed, or 1. So when we compare the outputs here, right, we've got 2, which is in this point here, and 1, it's twice as big big or twice as large. So we say twice as large. Why does this make sense? Why does this make sense? Not what does this mean? Why does this make sense? Write the function as a ratio to prove this happens whenever x does not equal 0 and f of x does not equal 0. Okay, so we've got g of x as a ratio to f of x. And if we do that, let's just zoom in a little bit, um, g of x is twice f of x 
over f of x and one divided by zero, so f of x can't be zero, but otherwise these cancel out and you get two. It tells you that the ratio of the heights is always going to be two. So here's a way to look at that vertical scale. On to number three. Okay. On the function f, f of two equals eight. At what endpoints does the function h need to reach the same outputs? Well, we already kind of showed that, but basically if you take h of one, that's the same thing as f of twice one. So we double the inputs of h before plugging them into f, which is f of two, which is two cubed or eight. And why does this make sense? Well, the inputs, I would say this, of h are doubled before being plugged into f. So they only need to be half the value. In other words, before we had to plug in two, and now we only have to plug in one, and one is half the value of two, and that's because you're doubling. Uh, that's the relationship here, that h of x equals f of two x, something like that. Okay, number four. What are the outputs of the functions g and h at x equals one? Okay, well, g of one, we've this already, that's twice f of one, which is two times one cubed, or two. h of one, however, is different. h of one is f of two times one, which is f of two, or two cubed, which is eight. And how many times smaller are the outputs of the function g than h at x equals one? So eight divided by two is four. If it's four times smaller, got it. Why does this make sense? Write the functions as a ratio to prove that this happens whenever x does not equal zero. And I should say uh, g of x does not equal zero. Well, we can kind of do this all in one shot. We can say why it makes sense in the ratio. So we can say that h of x over g of x, what does that equal? Well, h of x is f of 2x, g of x is twice f of x, and these are different things because in the numerator here, you're cubing the 2x, the whole thing. And the denominator is just two times x cubed. And if you cube the whole numerator, you get eight x cubed over two x cubed. And here the x cubes cancel, they're not, x is not zero, and eight divided by two is four. So it's always going to happen that in terms of their heights, h will be four times higher than, than g, which is which is true when x equals zero, I suppose, but I don't want to divide by zero here. That would, that would be an issue. And four times larger when you have an input of zero is still zero. So that's why I'm excluding that there. All right, that's our first page. Thanks.